My name is Amanda Langston, and this is my American Literature video project on Judith Sargent Murray and her essay on the equality of the sexes. Judith Sargent Murray was born May 1st of 1751 and died June 20th, 1820, at 69 years old. She was the eldest of eight children, four of whom didn't live into adulthood. There were ways for wealthy female children to receive a formal education at this time. However, it was rare and Murray was not so fortunate as to receive one. Rumors claim that she was educated by sitting in on her Harvard-bound brother's tutoring sessions, but this was not the case. She was self-educated and immersed herself in her family's very large and vast library. Murray was eventually married to John Stevens, a ship captain at age 18. As the American Revolution progressed, the shipping industry in Gloucester, where they lived, suffered greatly. Her family's lack of money encouraged Marie to, be, to begin attempting to publish her work. Her first published work was The Sultry Thoughts Upon the Utility of Encouraging a Degree of Self-Complacency, Especially in the Female Bosom. Unfortunately, they could not come up with enough money to pull their family out of debt. Stevens had to flee and died shortly after in 1786. The couple never had biological children of their own, but had adopted one of their nieces and a young cousin of Murray's. Two years after the death of her husband, she married an admired friend, John Murray. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son who only lived a couple of hours, and at age 40, she gave birth to a daughter, her only biological child whom she homeschooled. Murray wrote and had published many essays, poetry, and plays. She changed her suede in multiple times, at one point changing it to the gleaner, which was assumed by society to be a man. Later on, when the family was in need of money, she collected the columns she wrote under the pseudonym and published them in a book called The Gleaner under her own name. Murray's plays would have been of the first American plays produced on stage. They included The Medium and The Traveled Return, both of which were satires on American citizenship and featured strong female roles. Among these accomplishments, Murray also aided her cousin in opening a female academy in Dorchester, Massachusetts, where many of the female children in her family attended school. After her husband passing, ha passed in 1815, she completed and published John Murray's autobiography. Judith Sargent Murray was a leader in the equality of education in men and women. Her essay on the equality of the sexes was published in two parts and two separate issues of the Massachusetts magazine under the pseudonym Constantia in 1790. This was two years prior to Mary Wollstonecraft's A Vindication of the Rights of Women. In her essay, she argues the equality of a woman's mind and soul to a man's. She makes a couple of great points that I didn't realize were ever actually written out. The first part of her essay begins with a poem that explains the differences in intellectual capacities between human beings is not related to the sex of the person. Following her poem, she lists the four branches of intelligence, which are imagination, reason, memory, and judgment, and then points out that females have long been crowned masters of imagination and creativity. She posed the question, is the needle and kitchen sufficient to employ the operations of a soul thus organized? Of course, the answer is no, and because it is not, she explains that they have no better way of entertaining their imaginations, and females would use their creativity to create rumors and scandal. Next, she discusses the second listed form of intelligence. This form of intelligence is still stereotypically not associated with females. Reason seems to be a favorite in the arguments of the inequality of women. She explains that if females were deficient in reason, it is only because they have not been allowed to learn, because that only makes sense. However, we know that today a woman's education is not enough to earn the description of reasonable. Instead, women are often labeled emotional and unreasonable. Those two adjectives are apparently synonyms. And she doesn't stop there. She destroys the traditional view that a stronger body equals a stronger mind by the Pope, who is distinguished by a diminutive stature, could nevertheless lay claim to the greatness of the soul. Furthermore, she explains it would make more sense for society to assume that women were smarter than men to create a balance. 
The second half of her essay pays note to the religious views of women and also shames society for training women to be only focused on how others view them. That ornamenting their exterior ought to be the principal object of their attention. She ends the essay stating that the female body is not equal in strength to men, explaining that this is not her argument. But in respect, O oh ye arbiters of our fate, we confess that the superiority of is indubitably yours. You are by nature formed for our protectors. We pretend not to vie with you in bodily strength. Upon this point, we will never contend for victory. Shield us then, we beseech you, from external evils, and in return, we will transact your domestic affairs. Do Sergeant Murray and her essays on the equality of the sexes is of the first feminist writings of the United States. Although she doesn't argue that women have a place outside of the domestic sphere, she fights to free women's minds. Education begets knowledge, and knowledge is power. It was an amazing start to the American feminist movement.